these members of the studio audience are volunteering to undergo a unique experience. They all want to enter the hypnotic world of Paul McKenna. Welcome, Paul McKenna. Thank you very much. Hello, and thanks for joining us once again in the hypnotic world. People ask me if I ever hypnotized celebrities, and well, years ago, I actually hypnotized a young Linford Christie, and I convinced him that he'd run faster with a ferret down his shorts. <laughs> Works a treat. Time now to select the ten volunteers who will become tonight's stars. What I recollect from going actually under was that um, I got extremely warm feeling all over, like a warm glow, which was with me through most of the evening. When I was actually standing there and my eyes were closed, I was swaying. I could really feel that. I was a bit frightened, I thought I was going to fall over. But for some reason, as I was going under, there was something holding me up. All I heard was uh, Paul's voice. I was aware of the um, audience, but it was like the volume had been turned down. And as I was going under, I just felt really peaceful and, and relaxed, and it was such a nice feeling. Um, just something I haven't experienced before. You can't really explain it to somebody who hasn't been there. Here they are, tonight's ten subjects, all ready to have the untapped power of their imaginations unleashed. Rome-born Andrew Travolucci has been hypnotised before, but didn't think you could be hypnotised twice. He now knows differently. And Lisa Brundle is usually shy on first meeting, so was surprised how uninhibited she became after first meeting Paul. Hi, I wonder if I can ask you a quick question. What do you think the main cause of marital problems is? Infidelity. Yes. Um, what about you then, Andrew? Communication. Communication. Mm. Sleep. Because when you wake up, you'll both believe that you're unhappily married and you're at the marriage guidance counsellors. <laughs> you, Andrew, will believe that your wife is nothing but a spendthrift and a flirt, and despite that, you still want to patch things up between you. However, when I snap my fingers, you will suddenly realise that after five years of marriage, your wife is, in fact, a man. <laughs> when you wake up, Lisa, all the things that Andrew thinks about you are indeed true, but you'll think he's a slob and a miser and you'll be complaining about him. When I snap my fingers, for you, he will become the most attractive man in the world. Ready? <laughs> Eyes open, wide awake, wakey wakey, rise and shine. Hello there, how can I help you two lovely people? We've got problems with our marriage. Problems with your marriage? Yeah, um, stop it. Now, what is the main problem between you then, uh, <laughs> so? Well, basically, I'll stop it. The thing is, is that basically she's a bit of a flirt. Well, I think she's a bit of a flirt. I mean, I'm not... Stop that. I have this problem... <laughs> Sorry, yes, go on. People sort of, you know, find her attractive and <coughs> I don't quite like that. You know, she goes out short skirts. Uh, to me, it looks dirty and cheap. We, we, stop. <laughs> dirty and cheap. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, really, but stop that. I'm not being funny. Will you stop that? Um, when did you realise there were problems uh, with your marriage? What marriage? <laughs> oh. I'm not being funny or anything. Can you yeah. stop looking at my wife as well? <laughs> <laughs> You're probably tempting it as well. Can you stop that as well? I, I'm afraid I have to look at both of you. It's important to establish Don't rapport look at during my our wife. session. Look at me when you talk to me. <laughs> oh, okay. See, this is what I mean. She's actually flirting with you at the moment. <laughs> I'm quite aware of that, and I'm a professional, so please don't let it worry you. Oh, it when, does worry me. Well, what, what does he do that irritates you, then? Can you look at me? What does he do that irritates you? Is that better? <laughs> no, 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 you know, he said to sort yeah, of... I don't know what you're doing. Oh, hello, and... Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, are there any qualities in me that you think might suit your husband? Everything. <laughs> I mean, if you like to... Don't chose, smile! Yes. I'm a professional counsellor, Andrew. You, you, you can, okay. you know, trust me. See, now, if you look like him, there wouldn't be no problem. Well, why didn't you marry him? Because I didn't know him. Oh, right. So you knew me, so you married me? Yeah, well, something's better than nothing, isn't it? 
When, when did you first realise there were problems with your marriage? Honeymoon. <laughs> Why? I mean, his name's Andrea, but it should be Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Um, I think it's important that I make the point that marital problems are not solved just like that. <laughs> Come on, darling. Come on, darling. I'm not into that. Come on, darling. I'm not into that. I'm normally quite extrovert but I would be very nervous if I knew there was a lot of people watching me and I'd probably be quite shy. So to actually see myself doing what I was doing was like, that is not me. Assembly process worker Paul Bekos says he doesn't usually like to stand out in a crowd. Paul, you having a good time? Yeah. Now, we've never met before, have we? No. Nope. And I know nothing about you? Nothing at all, no. Sleep. <laughs> but I'm about to because I'd like you to answer a few questions for me because for the next part of our show, our teleprompt lady, Lizzie, who's sitting just round the corner, is waiting to fill in the gaps for this next routine. So, what do you do for a living? Could An you tell me? Assembly process worker. Assembly process worker. What type of house do you live in? A three bedroom house. What's the name of the road you live in? Tudor Crescent. Do you have a wife? Yes. What's her name? Hazel. What does she do? She works for the government. And so. where is she from? Portsmouth. What car do you drive? Rover, 216. Colour? Blue. OK, what's the registration? E184VYG. That's great. Thanks very much. Got all that, Lizzie? Fantastic. OK, now, don't be puzzled because it'll all become clear in just a few moments because when you wake up, you'll forget that you've just given me that information. You want to help us in reading the news. You'll <laughs> listen to your fellow newsreader and believe absolutely the things that she says. And then you'll read your own bit of news. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake. Right, could you come with me then, please? the news. Police are this evening trying to track down an assembly process worker called Paul, whose three-bedroomed house in Tudor Crescent today <laughs> fell into a 50-foot hole. Paul is in line for half a million pounds in compensation, but only if he can be traced in the next five minutes. Uh, uh, Royal news now and Prince Charles is to marry again. The prince's and... new bride, Hazel that's, that's from my, Portsmouth... <laughs> is a government worker. They've been seeing each other in secret for some time. <laughs> Hazel says that the Prince is the first real man she's ever been out with. <laughs> After a sad succession no. of wimps, drunks and morons, I'm sorry. Hazel will also become the first Queen to have modelled nude when her Playboy <laughs> centrefold spread Who hits the newsstands this tomorrow. This on here. <laughs> <laughs> and now to call for the weather. Um, it started off bad, it's getting worse. <laughs> And finally, a runaway steamroller ploughed into a parked car this evening. The car, a Blue Rover 216 <laughs> registration number E184 VYG, was completely Ooh. flattened. Insurers who say this type of accident isn't covered are still trying to trace the owner oh, of the vehicle no. so that they can <laughs> slip it under no. his door. <laughs> now, this is the main story this evening. Now over to Gary Lineker at the sports desk. <laughs> That is unbelievable. I can't believe I've lost my house, my car, my wife, everything. It's gone. You'd probably be able to get the furniture back again, I would think. I don't think that's been... Well, then a 50-foot hole and give me furniture back. I don't yeah. think so, somehow. Come on, with me. I think we're coming back. That's the news for this evening. From me, good night. It just seems so real. Um, but after I was brought back out of hypnosis by Paul, um, I totally realised it was fictional and that you had actually got the information from me. <laughs> Which I couldn't believe because I didn't remember giving it to you at the time. <laughs> Computer manager Bill Bury says he wouldn't normally do the things Paul suggested even if he'd been drinking, which he hadn't. Denmark-born Lars Nielsen has always been a fan of the show and says it's even better once you've actually been a part of it. And football fan Bonnie Dormer is an optical receptionist who couldn't believe her eyes when she saw herself under hypnosis. How's everyone doing? Having a good time? Great. Well, we're going to have a quick break now, and during that break, sleep and relax. 
I'm talking to you, sir. You'll be your normal self in every way, except every now and then you'll leap up and shout out a bizarre headline from a newspaper, because you'll think for that moment that you're a news vendor. When you wake up, you're going to become the village gossip. You'll be walking around telling a scurrilous gossip about everybody here in the audience. Oh, yes. <laughs> wakey, wakey, Bill. What do you think of that, then? Nice and fashionable? That's horrible. So, all oh, right, so what would you do if I asked you to wear that? I'd say no. You don't sleep. When you wake up, you'll do as I tell you. Hi, <laughs> Zen, wide awake. Uh, would you put that on, then, for us? Yeah, sure. Great. <laughs> OK. They like it. Sleep. And so will you. <laughs> because when you wake up, you are going to think that you're a holiday camp green coat. OK? <laughs> you, sir, are going to be a hopeless romantic during the break. You'll believe that every woman here this evening is the most beautiful woman in the world. OK, ready? Join us in a few moments to find out how they got on. Eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Read all about it, read all about it! <laughs> Queen Mary's <laughs> dog and has puppies! Puppy. You look <laughs> not unique. Now, let's see how our subjects got on during the break. Hello, sir. Why'd you call this? This is a funny face. Yeah. I feel the moonlight in you. <laughs> read all about it, read all about it. Blonde geezer in waistcoat can't sing. <laughs> what are you I'm sure. feeling the mood of love. Competition, madam. Would you like to enter? Exactly. Yep, and this lady here, come on, all line up. I want gossip. you all to shout who's got the best knobbly knees. Come on, out the front, <laughs> all of you, please. That's who it is. Right, 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 what about these ones? She can't get her leg up. <laughs> Can you give me a big funny smile? That's lovely. What a smile! <laughs> <laughs> My God, I think you're going to win it. And what about you? Let's see your smile then. Would you like to be a green coat, sir? No Oh well, never mind. Read all about it. Read all about it. Paul McKenna is a hypnotist. Well, was there somebody shouting things out, you know... Read to... all about it! Read all about it! <laughs> Bogies land in Manstead! Aliens everywhere! Run! <laughs> yeah, um, was there somebody shouting things out just... just now? Yeah. There's been yeah. some nuts up shouting. Yeah. It's, it's what? <laughs> it's him, is it? <laughs> no, no. in the head. Yeah. Now, could you point some, somebody out in the audience to us? I mean, you oh, know, yeah. tell me some gossip about that, that man, bloke there. That yeah. man, I was saying, I went to see Adonis last week. Yeah. And he was one of them. Really? It was disgusting. I mean, how old is he? I mean, yeah. all these men are about 20 old. He's got to be in his 50s. Oh. It's disgusting. Read all about it, read all about it. Adonis, take a new member. <laughs> Would you like to enter our funny face competition, no, sir? I wouldn't, no. You I, sure? No, I'm absolutely Wonderful. sure. But what about some of the people in the audience here? Um, well, I mean, you see this lady here? Oh, yes. Yeah, that one's smiling. She was brilliant. She yeah. got a funny face. <laughs> Glamorous <laughs> grand. You haven't seen oh. anything. <laughs> Do you meet a lot of nice young ladies? <laughs> Are there any that you could oh, point no. to right now? <laughs> oh, that one, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm feeling the mood for you. <laughs> I don't know where the slogans are coming from. If you asked me to give you a read all about it now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to say, basically. Uh, apparently, my friend said it's the funniest I've ever been. He watched me hypnotised before I go out on a Saturday night now. 
Alan Dorgachern is a student who is keen to be hypnotized and says he was very impressed at Paul's ability to turn him into an entertainer. Catering company owner Graham Laidlaw has never been hypnotized before and was amazed by the self-confidence he gained under hypnosis. Right, I'm only talking to you now if I specifically touch you on the shoulder. So this next suggestion is for you, sir, you, sir, you, sir, and you, madam, because when you wake up, you will all believe that you are taking part in the finals of Miss Hypnotic World. You'll pout and wiggle in your sexy, teasing way as you talk to the judges and try and convince them. That's all except for you, madam. You will not wish to win because you found out that the first prize is a dirty weekend for two with Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> you will believe that you are Miss Austria. And because you are Miss Austria, you're very German in your way. Yes, you'll be thigh-slapping and very proper and very precise, and you'll be trying to convince the judges that you are the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> yes? You are going to be Miss Scotland. Oh, yes, a very fine Scottish lassie. That's right, you'll be trying to convince the judges that you're a very beautiful lady and that they should vote for you. <laughs> You are going to be Miss Japan. <laughs> You'll be walking about very gracefully and try and convince the judges that you're a very sexy, lovely, honourable lady. <laughs> you are going to be Miss Australia. You're confident, you're brash, and sometimes even rude. Ready? <laughs> Eyes open, wide awake. Coming to you live and direct from the glittering theatre of the mind, it's the 42nd annual Miss Hypnotic World Contest, presented this year by Mr. Paul McKenna and Miss Debbie Greenwood. Thank you so much and welcome to this very, very special occasion. Now, I know you've been backstage, Debbie, haven't you? I have. It's very tense. The atmosphere is heady with expectation, hairspray and false tan. <laughs> it's all going on. Well, let's welcome our first contestant, shall we? Yes, Miss Japan! <laughs> Mr. Japan, you have... Oh. Uh, hello. You have such beautiful, gleaming, long black hair. How do you keep it in such good condition? Oh, it takes me seven hours a day to look like this. Seven hours a day? I know that your boyfriend is a highly successful sumo wrestler. <laughs> Why do you find a man of that sort of stature attractive? Well, a miss with such a slender body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's attracted to the lovely, lovely, big hunk of a man. You're so honey. <laughs> Do you have a special message for our judges this evening? Anything you'd like to say to convince them that they should give you the prize? <laughs> you make me very, very happy. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Japan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please will you welcome Miss Austria. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I can see by the way you pick that up that you you do a lot of sporting activities in the Alps, don't you? You had a certain sporty way of doing that. I'm also a butcher as well. <laughs> yes. And my husband's a lumberjack. A... <laughs> Miss Austria, do you do any uh, yodelling and thigh slapping? Absolutely. Could yes. you demonstrate for us? Um, yolo, 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 yolo. <laughs> thank you, thank you, most of I know that um, the sound of music was filmed in the village near where you live. What was Julie Andrews really like? Oh, my bestest, bestest friend, you know. <laughs> Such a warm woman! <laughs> What would you do if you actually won the prize, Miss Austria? I, I think I would build myself a goat farm, probably, <laughs> in the Alps, because that is where I'm from originally. Mm. I mean, this is mm. what I want to do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Austria. <laughs> Please we welcome Miss Scotland. Hello, 
Island of Scotland. Hello there. What, what special qualities do you, do you have that helped you win the title of Miss Scotland? Well, as you know, I come from a wee village in Scotland up in the Highlands. <laughs> and as I believe, the Scottish women are the most beautiful women in the world. Why do you think that is? What, what, what is it that you do? What's your special beauty routine? I don't use any perfume soaps or anything like that, you know, so my skin's always, it's always fresh. So, if you actually get any blackheads, how do you cope with them? Oh, I don't get blackheads, no. You don't? <laughs> no. I've never had them in my life. Well, you, well you're very, very beautiful. I know. Miss <laughs> Scotland, could you give us a demonstration of your Highland dancing, please? Oh, we take the high road, you take the road. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Hypnotic Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Australia. Now, she's here. She's finishing off beer. You can Hello. Drink, get I? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, but you can't drink beer because you have to keep you, yourself in shape, don't you? So? Uh, <laughs> Miss Australia, what are your vital statistics? 22, 41, 60. Right. <laughs> got a problem with that? No, I, I haven't got any problem. I, I was just wondering, have you got a special message you'd like to say to our judges? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Australia! Well, it's so tense in here, you could cut the atmosphere with a chainsaw, I can tell you. Paul, do you have the envelope? Yes, Have Debbie. Just reached a decision. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a bit of a, a tremble, you know. Understandable. You ready for this? Well, the winner is Miss Australia. Oh, um, it's actually the, the other way round. She came third. The real winner then is Miss Austria. <laughs> so important to win because it was for my country as far as I could see. So, yeah, it was really serious and I, I remember being really nervous, you know, completely nervous about the situation and I just had to get out there and, and, and win, really. Luigi Lucano from Woking didn't believe in hypnosis but thought he'd give it a go and says he enjoyed it so much he'd now like to do it again. Luigi, can I ask you, are you scared of heights at all? No. So you're quite confident? Yep. Good sleep. Because when you wake up, you'll believe you're a world-famous tightrope walker. Yes, you're 200 feet above the ground on this tightrope. Now, it's imperative for you to reach the other side. You're a professional. You'll continue unless something gets in your way. <laughs> Eyes open wide awake, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Right, well, that's just about it for another week. I hope you've Oi. enjoyed the show. And um, oh. anyway, uh, what a damn good show we're having. <laughs> I would like to say uh, a special thank you to you, Luigi. You've been a really smashing guy. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> I'd like to thank all our special guests, because they're such great guys, oh. aren't they, our special guests? They really are. And, uh, and indeed, also our subjects, and great guys as well. So, good night. Oh!